Hello and welcome to the show where you get a chance to watch some real talent at work. But hey, that's enough about me. There are also nine fantastic artists raring to go. In today's heat, we have an artist who champions drawing, another who used to be a cobbler, and yet another who paints in a cowshed. All right, don't milk it. Welcome to Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. In our search to find the UK's most talented portrait artist, nine new contenders are put to the test, challenged to capture three famous faces in just four hours. This is the most important stage. If this doesn't go right, then you're just fiddling. All for the chance to win a £10,000 commission to paint broadcaster Graham Norton for the permanent collection of the National Gallery of Ireland. But first, they must impress the judges. Art historian Kate Bryan, independent curator Kathleen Soriano, and award-winning artist Ty Shan Schirenberg. I think character's more yeah. impressive in yeah. a portrait. That was the right answer. That's why we picked <laughs> you on your submission. <laughs> so who can convey character on canvas? I think I'm just pushing paint around at the minute and hoping it'll fall into the right place. <laughs> and earn themselves a place in the semi-final. Do you love me, George? I do, yes. I love you. OK, thank you. <laughs> I, I love you as well. <laughs> thank you. Here for today's heat are three amateur artists. Kay Hodges, David Meeling and Corinne Young. I'm a bit of a country bumpkin. I can probably count on one hand the amount of times I've come to London. Um, it's a little bigger than Devon, so it's not what I'm quite used to. <laughs> Joining them are six professional artists. Lily Musker, Kyla Tomlinson, Steve Russell, Amir Anajad, Gareth Reed, and George Clark. I've been preparing with a lot of press-ups, making a lot of smoothies, healthy eating, healthy living, healthy thinking, um, hopefully healthy painting. The judges chose today's shortlist on the basis of a digital image of the artist's self-portraits. So they want to begin by getting up close and personal with the real thing. Well, judges, here they are, all the submissions, all shapes and sizes, got a real mixture. Different materials and different approaches. Well, let's start here, then. Very beautiful and heartwarming. But what is, I think is very masterful here is we, these very light skin tones she's using. What I loved was the background with this kind of polka dot bit at the bottom, very weird colour combination, grey and mustard. You know, she's taking unusual steps and it's paying off. I think what we really liked about this was that you had as someone who was really, really good draftsman, fantastic beard, but this wonderfully <laughs> contemporary colour and the way he picks up that colour just here yeah. or on his hand, it's mm -hmm. just, it's gorgeous. Mm. It's very bold for our times, isn't it? Mm. Who would dare do something like that? It looks like it should be hung on the Royal Academy walls. A hundred years ago. A couple of hundred years ago. <laughs> Two hundred years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really a throwback. The tilt of the head, the way that they emerge from these misty shadows. But the light is beautiful, and what's incredible, although there's hardly any colour or paint in it, we can see the red in the lips yeah. and the blue in the eyes. Now, this is magic, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, it's so unbelievably photorealistic. I think probably one of the most exquisite photorealist yes. pieces we've ever had. In a way, it's sort of hard to take seriously, but you have to take it seriously because this person is a supremely talented craft person and, in photorealism. And it's every texture from the rabbits. You want to run your fingers mm. through their fur. The problem with pictures like this, of course, it's phenomenal, the photo level of photorealism. But then we have to think of the day, and I hope the artists can find an equivalence to show yeah. that sort of level of skill in four hours. As the artists set up, it's becoming clear that a wide range of mediums will be on display. I use charcoal on canvas. If it's all sharpened, ready, then it's a bit easier. I've got some oils and pastels, and I'm not absolutely sure what I'm going to begin with. This is a Stay Wet palette, which is used for acrylic paint. So over the four hours and the hot lights, this is going to hopefully be ideal. 
Art teacher and amateur artist Kay Hodges was an illustrator for over 20 years. For her self-portrait, she wanted the contrast of light to show the form of her face and how she ages every day. The background's quite dark, so I'm hoping that the sitter is going to be light. So who are today's sitters? Artist, your sitter today is one of the UK's leading actors. She once played the evil stepmother to my buttons in Cinderella. She is the magnificent Sean Phillips. Having begun acting professionally at the age of 11, Sean Phillips' broad range of roles spans from endearing to downright deadly, including the infamously cruel Empress Livia in I, Claudius. Hello. Sean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great honour. I'm guessing you've been um, painted before. I have, yes. How do you find it generally? I'm very interested, because I, I, I love art and I love to be able to paint, actually. So wh where will you go today, internally, do you think? Well, I've got some lines I'm trying to remember, so I'll oh. probably be running over something in my head. That's yeah. handy. Well, if you'd like me to come and run some with you, yeah. I'd be more than I'd happy. I'd be delighted. You're, you're very good in Shakespeare, aren't you? Oh, this is one of my yes, fortes. Yes. Obviously, I know a lot of it off by heart <laughs> from my studies. <laughs> yes. Artist, your sitter today is adept at mastering a plethora of gritty roles. Please welcome Phil Davis. One of the nation's best-loved actors, Phil Davis is known for his villainous roles, including a mean moneylender in Deke House and Poldark's malevolent servant. Oh, nice to meet you. Phil, you're very welcome. Thank, Thank you very much. Now, I painted you as a, a villain, but, you know, you're so benign. Where In real life, I'm a pussycat, yes. So where does it come from, this sense of evil? I don't know. I, I, dread to, I think, you know, when you're playing a, a bad guy, you should do it unapologetically and gleefully. What do you make of sitting still all day? Do you think you'll put on an actor's persona? Well, instead of pretending to be someone else, I'll pretend to be myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Artist, your sitter today is one of Britain's most beloved broadcasters. He's fiercely intelligent. Don't let the accent fool you. He's the magnificent Adrian Childs. My dear friend, the TV and radio broadcaster Adrian Childs, has a love of both journalism and football, which has led to him presenting everything from the one show to match the day. Come here, you big lonk. How are you doing? Please sit down. Now, we've put some um, pebbles oh, yeah, behind yeah, you. Yeah. Tell us why, do you think? When I was about 12, I picked a stone off, off a, a beach and I've carried it in my pocket. Sort of ever since it's become a bit like Gollum's ring, actually. I yes. just can let, let go of it. It worries me because if you do ever lose it, oh, I, no. I, I think you'll just fade I'm, away. I will, yes. So, um, how are you feeling about this experience? I mean, just sitting still is a, is a real challenge for me. I'm the most the biggest fidget ever. I mean, this will be torture. It's four hours, isn't it? It is, but you can move a bit. But what position do I have to? Well, we're going to talk okay. to the artist. Right. Okay. I'd like to see a bit more of your face, but. Obviously, so that's not good for <laughs> you guys. If you face there... Yeah. That's good for me. I'll take the glasses off if you prefer. I don't mind. I'd rather you were comfortable, actually, because okay, it I'll, is a long time. I'll be comfortable, don't worry about yeah. me. Am I all right here? Yeah, yeah. it's perfect for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. happy with the profile yeah. this yeah. side, yeah. It will suit you. Okay. Perfect. Artists, I hope you're all ready, because the challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete your portraits. Very good luck, and your time starts now. Work it, baby, work it. <laughs> Could you be this way a tiny bit? Fraction. I just started doing yoga. It's gonna, I think it's going to come in useful here. The first marks an artist makes on their canvas are often the foundation to a portrait. And today, everyone has started with a sketch. I like it to kind of look in proportion, so I do an outline before I start applying paint. Amateur artist Corinne Young studied art at Plymouth University and today works as a sales advisor at a picture framing store. Her self-portrait was painted from a photograph and took 15 hours to complete. Now, what makes the decision as to whether to use the grid or not? I normally, if I can, paint from life, but I needed to make sure it was definitely right, so I thought I'll be safe. I've only recently started using the grid this past week. <laughs> well, we'll watch it slowly as the page fills. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. 
Using a grid at the drawing stage helps ensure perfect proportions, which suits one artist to a T. I just want to make sure that everything is in the right place. Usually I take like 40 hours over like a seven week period. Today I can't do that, so I need to try and get detail in certain areas. David Mealing is an amateur artist from Bristol whose photorealistic submission is a tribute to his beloved pet rabbits. In the last series, his portrait of Impressionist Ronnie Ancona was only the second he had ever created using oil paint. Are we going to see any other elements, any sort of rabbits or cards? No, or... but I've masked my board off and I'm going to cut some, a panel off and try and do some of it in black and white. Oh, so oh. it adds a little bit of a twist to it. OK, I look forward to seeing that. Getting the features of a sitter's face in proportion is a key element to achieving a good likeness, and one artist is employing an age-old method called sight size drawing. The reason why I stand further back from Phil is so that I can see his nose as well as his eyebrows at the same time. As I get closer, I can only see small parts of him on their own, so distance for me is a really integral part of creating a picture. Professional artist George Clark spent five years training in the traditions of oil painting in Florence. He painting his self-portrait during one session using a mirror in his studio, which is in a cow shed in the middle of a field. You've struck lucky today because Phil's backdrop has a cow shed feel about it. Extremely lucky. It's lovely. A lot of the time when I'm painting, I'm really thinking about 17th century masters, and this is a sort of background that they would enjoy. I'm told that during the course of painting, you, you fall in love with your sitter. Yeah, I try point. to, yes. The broad philosophy is that you can only really paint something if you understand it, and the ultimate understanding of something is love, really. So I always try to, whatever Does I'm painting... Does that mean you, do you love me, George? If I was painting you, I would... Uh, I did one, I'm on about now. Do you love me now? I do, yes. I love you. OK, thank you. <laughs> I, I love you as well, too. <laughs> thank you. The artists have been working for almost one hour. He's got such a great face. Fantastic character. Unfortunately, brown is not usually what I use at all, so the fact that we've got a brown background is a lot. I think if I just get the drawing accurate to get the likeness and get everything positioned correctly, then I can just fill in the colours, hopefully. At the moment, I'm just literally in the background as quick as I can so that I can crack on with the, the face. For the last hour, our nine heat artists have been busy with their depictions of Phil Davis, Sean Phillips and a restless Adrian Childs. Head down, please. Drawing has been a key part of the process for all of today's artists. You're now investigating the likeness in the face and seeing how it works. Yeah. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, actually, and I thought I just started by doing some quick drawings. Uh -huh. I just had to warm up my hand and get used yeah. to the sitter and had the face become a wee bit more familiar to me. So as if you were an athlete, you would do your stretches. Yeah, it was so a little bit like So making some sketches. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah, warm up. yeah. <laughs> Professional artist Kyla Tomlinson was 11 when she made her first oil painting and now works as an animator in Dublin. She works with a range of mediums, including charcoal and pastels. She created her self-portrait in one hour. I'll probably finish this and then do a pastel drawing in the afternoon. How on earth are you going to choose what to submit? Because, of course, we can only uh, judge yeah. one thing. What's yeah. your criteria? I think it would have to be what the character is mm -hmm. like in the picture. Okay. That's the most... Because it's great if you can get a likeness, but I think character's more yeah. impressive in mm -hmm. a portrait. That was the right answer. That's why we picked <laughs> you on your submission. <laughs> Thanks. And today there's one other artist proving that charcoal isn't just that thing that made your fingernails black in the classroom. I'm just blocking in loosely, kind of simple shapes, finding relationships. This is the most important stage. 
if this doesn't go right, then your foundation is not right, then you're just fiddling. Professional artist Gareth Reed made it to the Dublin Heat of Portrait Artist of the Year 2014, where he drew Sharon Kaur. He's recently started to introduce colour into his charcoal work, and his submission for this year was sketched in the middle of the night, just before a family holiday. You look like you've made an incredible start. I'm mm. wondering what you're going to be doing for the rest of the day. A lot of it will go on and then come off again, so it's about refining a little bit, looking more specifically mm. at little how things relate. Is it a challenge? Is it a good challenge. sitter? It's a challenge. challenge yeah. What makes him particularly challenging for you he's, as a sitter? He's distracted, easily distracted. So when you have a fidgety sitter, mm -hmm. what is it that you're having to deal with? Um, so it's just the little critical bits. You know, sometimes you've got to study a little shape. If it changes, even a degree, the, the, the shape changes. OK, well, I'll let you crack on. <laughs> Good luck. OK, thanks. Bye. Phil is really engaged at sitting, isn't he? Yeah. I think there's this lovely thing happening because he's a great character actor. So I really like the fact that all three artists here are very interested in character, possibly even more than likeness. He says he's really fidgety, but I think he is absolutely magnificent. This way a tiny bit, I think. Yeah. What do you think about Adrian as a sitter? I think some of the artists are having some difficulty with his fidgeting and moving around. He's most comfortable when he's chatting away and having a conversation. Yes. I think he's finding it properly difficult. Yeah. Today. You can almost feel it oozing out of him, yeah. this sort of itchingness of wanting to yeah. explode out of himself. This is a very clean set, isn't it? It's also a great contrast with the colours in her face, so she really glows. But you'd think blue would cast blue shadows, but it doesn't actually. It sets off her face in some way. Well, it does, because it's working in harmony with her light complexion. It actually warms her up, so the pinks are coming to the fore. It's an amazing bone structure, isn't it? Which has its problems as well. Because of these beautiful high cheekbones and rather deep-set eyes, it could get a bit bony and harsh. The artists have got their hands full. She's otherworldly, and to capture that without making it too severe is quite difficult. The background colour, I'm, uh, I'm going to do a background colour, but I don't know whether to do this background colour or another background colour. Self-taught professional artist Steve Russell mainly paints vibrant abstract figures with his signature pure colour background. A desire to produce a striking self-portrait led him to paint himself topless for his submission. We were fascinated by the level of closeness you had with your own self-portrait. Right. There's, there's a rawness and an honesty there. Well, I thought I'd go for being truthful, yeah, yeah. And are we going to see that today? Is that level of honesty always there? Probably, yeah. I just do what I do and do it as I see it. I, I don't think it's a secret or anything. Well, honest man, honest <laughs> portrait. Oh, that's me, yeah. Honestly, get on with it. <laughs> Now, did you arrive with the canvas this colour? Oh, it's board? Yeah, it's gesso. It's a gesso ground. It's I a love wonderful it. colour. It soaks the oil painting. Professional full-time artist Lily Musker's passion for art was sparked when she lived in India as a teenager. With a self-confessed obsession with supersized objects, her self-portrait is the final in a series she painted throughout her pregnancy. Now, you've been 15 years an artist. Yes. 15 years. Has your work changed over that period? Yes. Originally, I was doing a lot from photographs, which became very boring. So you have sitters now? Yeah. What is it about having the sitter there? I feel en enlivened and just get more energy. But you've conjured kind of likeness already. I'm glad you think a so. A very, very good likeness. I love the paint in the wooden panel, MDF, normal I make myself. I love the paint. I can see the eye, probably. Former cobbler turned professional artist Amir Najad grew up in Iran, and as a child, he painted in secret in the basement of his family home. He chose the composition of his self-portrait to show off his handmade canvas, and it took him one week to complete. 
Amir. Oh, yeah. The eyes are all ready. They're there. Awfully. Oh, yeah, they look great. So have you continued to paint from when you were a child in Iran right the way through to now? Has it been a continuous process? No, no continuous, but the many time on off. Last time I started painting four years ago, five years ago, before I never paint portrait, my self portrait's number four. That's the fourth portrait? The fourth portrait. Wow, Ian, it's an amazing portrait. Keep... So do you, how often do you work with a sitter? Is that an unusual thing for you? No, more than I never do. Actually, my first time sitter. This is your first time? First. So Sean Phillips is your first ever sitter. Sitter, yeah. That's That's a tough act to follow, yeah. I'm telling you. Wow, eh? Yeah. So is it just genetic, the, the ability to draw when you... No, it's pra no. practice, practice, practice. But, I mean, I could literally never draw. Anyone can. That can't practice. be true. Before the invention of the humble but essential paint tube, oil paints were freshly made, yet another traditional practice George loves to use. The grinding of the paint Show me how that goes on. Right, well, I'll give you a little demonstration if oh, you yes, like. Oh, yes, please. So I'm going to grind up some yellow ochre. So this is just uh, flaxseed oil that you'd feed to horses so that you can make on any farm. And this is very satisfying, isn't it? Yeah, and they're the traditional methods because they work, really. Um, they've, they've stood the test of time. Just pop the muller on top, and then that's the paint starting to be made. It's wonderful. Um, you seem very precise, almost draftsman-like yeah. in your yeah. work, but then I feel there's an inferno there crackling is, yeah. within. But I'm such a perfectionist, I just spend so long on it to make it how I want it to look. And yeah, sometimes but the fact it that you know that, I know. And I've been trying to speed up a bit, but I can't get it less than about seven weeks at the moment. Okay. It's nearly halfway through the challenge. I'm losing it a little bit. I'm kind of getting to the point where I know I'm going to have to stop yeah. soon because I, um, I can feel it's getting a little bit messy. Head down a bit, please. Thanks. Upper lip, mouth, chin is the bit that I'm not, sure, not totally sure about. I'm just moving the mouth up fractionally because these, the shapes in here aren't quite right. I'm just trying to get enough done that it looks like him and there's enough kind of filled out. Oh, I've got loads today. <laughs> Here in central London at the Wallace Collection are nine heat artists are vying for a place in the semi-final. For two hours, they've been capturing the faces of Sean Phillips, Phil Davis and Adrian Childs. I've got a slight itch on my stomach, Lily. You won't take a second. That's it, it's gone. And at the halfway mark, some favourites are already becoming apparent. Garrett's drawing, I, I love. It is monolithic, isn't it? I mean, yeah. he really started off, he was like a sort of lump of stone, and then he's been carving Adrian yeah. out of it. My concern is that I felt he'd done what he was going to do within probably an hour. I've not really worked out what more he's been doing to it since. He said that he was going to add a bit of colour, so I'm hoping that will change the complexion of the picture. What about Kyla's drawing of Phil? She says likeness is secondary to character, and that is a masterful character study. And I'm also interested to see whether she does do a second one. Corin has done this meticulous drawing, painstakingly filling it in. It looks like Adrian, the marks are nice, the colours are nice, but at the moment it's nothing particularly inspiring. What about David painting Sean? I think he's very disappointed with himself. He has a compromised style. He's not even happy with that version. The eye is phenomenal, it's very realistic. There's a lot of painting to do to try to replicate the amazing detail he had in his submission, so I can see why we'd be disappointed. I like these people very much, don't get me wrong, and I don't want to let them down. This is the longest I have sat still in my life ever. Have you sat still? 
When, as, he, as he rightly points out, I'm not even sitting <laughs> still. I mean, this is still up than I've ever sat in my life, put it like that. Oh, God. So, how has it been? You've looked fabulously statuesque. I've had a great time, yes. Have you communicated? No. Well, no. We've been silent here, partly because they're so concentrated and I know their time is so short. I'm yeah. so... I feel for them, you know, and, yeah. I, and I didn't feel I should interrupt the concentration. I've completely put myself in the hands of the artist. I'm not after being younger or thinner or better looking or anything like that. And I just hope that they're satisfied with what they've done. I mean, it's... Uh, I haven't looked yet. I absolutely have to see this paint go on. I think yeah. it's a terrific yeah. colour. And of course, it, 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 it reflects with her scarf. I think it's going to work nicely. I yeah, think yeah. it is. And Cynthia, she was thinking, oh. No, but I just had to see <laughs> the moment the paint went on. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. It's an absolute pleasure. With just over one hour to go, Kyla's prediction of a second portrait has come true. I walked past earlier yeah. and I saw your black and white door in a fill. And my one worry was that you might over fiddle with it. Yeah, I mean, that's where I was heading. And even now, I'm not really happy with parts of it. Oh, okay. It's getting muddled and oh, yeah. losing some of the energy that maybe it had, so I had to stop. Better to be slightly incomplete, isn't yeah. it, than to be marred. Yeah. But even if this doesn't work out, it, it, it may have saved the other one, yeah. so it will, it will not have died in vain. No. David, how's Hello. it going? Um, I think I spent too much time on, on her eye to begin with. Now I've done a lot of the rest of it, it seems to be coming together a little bit better for me. It's looking good. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Is this a bit of blue, I spy? Yes, but it's going to be very minimal. Minimal? Yeah, yeah. I suppose at this stage I'm just trying to not upset it. So maybe a little bit of pink in places. OK. Be excited to see where they, okay. where they find themselves. Me too. Let me see. Who knows? I say, I don't know. <laughs> There's only half an hour left in the competition. For me, because everything's always changing and in a constant state of flux, really to put too harsh an edge on something is a lie, really. I suppose that's why I, my paintings have become quite softened. A sort of shimmering grace is what I aim at. I do find it very difficult to change my style. I do look at a painting this loose and I'm not happy with it. It's really difficult to see where his cheekbones start and his nose ends. I think I'm just pushing paint around at the minute and hoping it will fall into the right place. <laughs> For almost four hours, our nine artists have been creating portraits of Adrian Childs, Bill Davis and Sean Phillips. With the end in sight, it's time for the finishing touches. Got to be a bit careful peeling it off. Oops. Artists, there are five minutes to go. The main thing that most frequently goes wrong is that I over soften and I'll lose the form in the paint. So I just need to concentrate. I think I'll probably put in the first drawing. I think it just worked out a bit better in terms of an overall finished piece. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your materials and stand away from your easels. <laughs> Having sat for the duration of the challenge, Adrian, Phil and Sean 
get to see the completed portraits and to choose one to take home. Adrian, your grim ordeal <laughs> is over. So how was the experience for you? I love these three equally. I'm actually really just nervous now. I don't want to... I'm, I am not worthy to sit in judgement on any of them. But it's a, it's, it's a lovely moment, this. Artists, can you please turn your easels? They all look remarkable. <sighs> Colin, what can I say? I just think it's... I, mean, I think it flatters me, probably. <laughs> No, I think it's... Oh, give me a hug. I think it's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it's you. It's really sweet. I just think it's amazing. It's a bit more kind of severe, and I suppose I like that too. This, to me, is a more accurate likeness in the way. There's the kind of a the sagging sort of cheekage. I suppose it's sort of almost more ambitious in that way. I just think that is so beautiful. I'll be taking Corinne's home with me. Hello. Goodness me. I think they're all extraordinary. I think there's a great deal of talent in this room. Well, well done. Striking, isn't it? Very thoughtful looking man, aren't I? There's something sort of tortured about that face, yeah. isn't there? Something very moving about that. Well done, fantastic. This is a bit of myself that I recognise. Very determined, isn't he? But it's wonderful. Well Thank done, you. fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to choose George's. Congratulations, all of you. You've done so well. Well done. That's yeah. extraordinary. I did get a glimpse of that wonderful blue. I haven't yeah. been looking all day, but well done. It's just amazing. Gosh, that's a lovely painting. Thank you so much. Lovely, wonderful colour, too, again. Lovely Thank you so colour. Much. Oh, look at that colour. My goodness, that is extraordinary. I mean, it's got nothing to do with anything over oh, there, but who cares? No, no, yes, exactly. No, it's really wonderful. I'm going to choose that one. You are a fantastic sister. Oh, well, thank you. Left alone with the finished works, the judges have a chance to examine each piece in close detail. It's a great piece of draftsmanship. He's great with colour as well. Mm. You know, there are these little touches, tiny yeah. little touches. Mm. And I do like the mark making as well, the slow sculpting in all that graphite. He did a very clever thing, didn't he? He knew he couldn't do the photorealism thing, so the way in which he did it was to go for this slice of black and white. And it's a great likeness. I mean, I don't know that we could ask him to do much more in a limited time situation. I'm really impressed. When I peeled my mask in film off, I was happy with the finished product, so... And I thought, ah, yes, I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> with such a classical education in painting, you'd expect him to be really proficient, but it's sort of all slightly going away now, and there's sort of large areas of colour with no definition in them at all. Yeah, he had this painting an hour in, and I got the feeling that he was painting the same painting again and again. Yeah. I think it's really difficult for young artists, when they want to go back to art history, how they absorb all those lessons wow. and make something that's new and fresh. And I think yeah. they get stuck. I really like this one. I like it even more when I learnt that she doesn't normally use the tablet, nor does she normally grid up, but she did it today because she wanted to be sure and confident that she'd get it right. I think she's still got a great likeness and a great sense of him. She definitely really knows how to handle paint and get it to do what she wants it to do, because a, a painting with this many grey tones should be chalky, and it's mm -hmm. not. This is a really lively drawing. It was fantastic watching Kyla do it. 
I am so pleased that she gave us this one. I was expecting to come around the corner and see the pastel on the board, so I am delighted. I think it's a likeness, but I think it's much more than that. It's a character. To me, it's not always the most important thing, getting a really strong likeness. I just would rather get something that was had a wee bit of life. Now they must decide on their top three. I'm, re I'm really struggling. I think this is such an amazing crop. There are subtleties in the sitter's face there, which I absolutely think he's caught very mm -hmm. well, which in this piece, although it's very nice, hasn't, yeah. hasn't mm -hmm. got quite the depth, has it? But which three have they chosen? Artists, your hard work has produced some really remarkable portraits. Yes, but unfortunately, only three of you can go through to the shortlist. And the first of those artists is David Meeling. The second artist is Corinne Young. And the third and final artist to be shortlisted is Gareth Reed. and commiserations to the rest of you, but you did a terrific well job. Well done. I had a great time today. I was chatting a lot as well as working, which is, um, makes it a nice difference from being in my lonely cow shed. It's time for closer scrutiny of the shortlisted pieces, and I have a bit of a confession to make. This is the first time ever that I've preferred the paintings that have been done on the day to the submissions. I mean, this fabulously technical thing, I like this a lot. He worked very slowly on this indeed to begin with, as though he was thinking through every way to get there. Mm. What was interesting about Sean today, she had a very difficult face to capture, and he's found something that neither of the other two competitors has caught, and he's found something very delicate in there. Yeah. I'm hoping the judges will see that I did everything I could to do a, a fairly finished painting today that, you know, hopefully they're happy with. What about Corinne? Right at the beginning, you spoke about the skin tones of her self-portrait and the moment she put brush to paper on Adrian it was she'd got that same mm. skill mm. they feel real and I think that these colors that she uses aren't chalky they're they're rich and I, I think she's got a very good understanding of color and how to get paint to do what she wants it to do I think there's a lot of practice that must go into that the artists were complaining about him moving an awful lot, but I think that the problem they were dealing with is he's got this really restless mind. And to a degree, I think that portrait captures that restlessness, mm. even though he's still and held tight. His eyes are very far away. He's sort of thinking about a million different other things. I'm in shock that I've been shortlisted and, and that Adrian's picked my painting. It's been a really, really good day. Better than I ever thought it could be. <laughs> As someone who... Who knows Adrian? Well, I think that Garrett's drawing is more Adrian. Mm. I really like his confidence in his own medium. You, know, you, you just feel that you're dealing with someone who really believes in the power of charcoal and the pencil, and he's stuck with it. It's a really, really lovely piece of work, and I'd love to see someone go forward using this different medium. What I also like is that in the drawing, as Gareth has been trying to find the face, you realise that the eyes are crooked and the nose is crooked and the mouth, everything isn't quite right and it makes as you... As I say, it's exactly <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you, as you're looking for Adrian, you're reinventing him all the time. It's a very lively piece of drawing because of nothing so fixed and taken for granted. It's all been searched for. I'm hoping they just think it's a solid, convincing head. Hopefully that's, that's enough. David? Corinne, Gareth, only one of you could go forward, and the judges have made their decision. The artists the judges have chosen showed a mastery of their medium and a unique skill in capturing form. And that artist is... Gareth Reed. Unbelievable, can't believe it. It was quite tense there, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> well done. I think Gareth's portrait was really, really lovely. He did such a good job, totally deserved to go through. 
I love black and white together, and I think the way he's done it, especially with charcoal and that, is just amazing. So I didn't expect to win, but I was uh, definitely trying to win.